You are now listening to the Griot's Black Podcast Network, Black Culture Amplified. Attention change makers. Nominations for the Griot's second annual Griot Hero Awards open January 2024. Head to the Griot's website from January 8th to February 9th to nominate a real hero making a positive impact in our communities and our culture. Last year, Daryl V. Atkinson, the co-founder of Forward Justice, took home the Griot Hero Award. This year, we're going to choose 10 honorees and celebrate their work and commitment to making a difference in our communities. So head to thegriot.com forward slash heroes to find out more information and to nominate your hero. It's Black History Month, so I'm sure you're going to hear a lot about Some of the heroes in black history, the people who are revered and loved for their contribution to America and to black society in general. And that's why I want to welcome you to the Griot Daily, the only podcast that'll tell you about the real gangsters of black history. I'm world famous white peopleologist Michael Harriet, and this is the Griot Daily. If you listen to this podcast regularly, you know we talk about Black history all the time. So, you know, Black History Month is nothing new here. We talk about how history affects the present. We talk about how history informs us, how the past informs us all of the time. So instead of talking about some of those heroic individuals that you'll usually hear during this month, we wondered how could we do something different? And that's where we came up with the idea to talk about the little known people in black history who are often forgotten, whether it's because their legacy was whitewashed and erased or whether in our case, it was because, you know, white people turned against them and branded them as outlaws, undesirables, deplorables, you know, the guys who history erases because white people didn't agree with them in real time. And we're going to talk about some of these little known outlaws. And the first one is one of my favorites. It's a man named Tunis Campbell. Now, if you don't know who Tunis Campbell is, uh, we've talked about the group of people who he belonged to that made their biggest mark on black history. The original 33, a group of black elected senators and state representatives in Georgia who were ousted from the state legislature after the Civil War because of racism, quite frankly. But Tunis Campbell, he's much bigger than that. Like he was a real G. I mean, and when I say gangster, I'm not talking about it in the, you know, the ephemeral sense. I'm not using the new definition of gangster. I'm talking about like, like he had a real gang, a 400 person gang that really went up against the Ku Klux Klan to protect his turf. Like Tunis Campbell did it, bro. And he was born in April 1812 and joined the African Methodist Church. He was called the oldest and best known clergyman in the African Methodist Church. That's because Tunis heard a calling from God to eliminate one of the biggest evils on the planet. Tunis was an abolitionist an anti-slavery activist, and he was really down for the cause, too. He was born in New Jersey, one of 10 siblings, and his dad was a blacksmith. And back then, blacksmithing was an African art that was brought to America by enslaved Africans. Like there wasn't a European form of blacksmithing until Africans brought it to America. And so he knew how to make money. So his family sent him to this Episcopal boarding school in Babylon, Long Island, New York. He was the only black student there. And that's when he dedicated his life to the gospel. But Tunis's gospel was a little bit different, right? Um, He began setting up abolitionist groups and began preaching about the evils of colonialism. And even though he was doing it in the North, It really made white people mad. Um, 
He was mobbed several times by just angry groups of white people and nearly killed. And during this time as a preacher, right, he was a waiter in this fancy New York hotel. So he wrote this guide to hospitality in hotels, right? And it's literally all the stuff that you think of as, you know, fancy hotel hospitality. Well, that came from this huge, extensive guide written by Tunis Campbell called the Hotel Keepers, Head Waiters and Housekeepers Guide. Now, all of the time he was doing this, right, and selling this guide, he used the proceeds from consulting with hotels and selling his guide to establish colored schools. Now, most of these schools were in Brooklyn, especially in Williamsburg, but those schools weren't really populated by like Brooklynites, Brooklyn residents. They didn't, you know, it wasn't a bunch of black kids in Timberlands back then because Tunis, what he was doing was he was secretly funding the Underground Railroad and assisting fugitive slaves to come to New York and get jobs. He had like a whole army of educated black people that were, was changing the demographics of Brooklyn. Now, you got to remember what Tunis was doing was illegal, right? There was this thing called the Fugitive Slave Law. And so if you hid or you know, gave aid to fugitive slaves, you were breaking the law. But again, Tunis was a G. He had a whole network, so he wasn't even worried about it. Well, when the Civil War broke out, the United States government came to him and said, hey, Tunis, you know, we know you got this whole gang of black people, so we're going to give you this contract. And they gave him a contract to raise 4,000 United States colored troops from his gang of black revolutionaries. And then in March 1865, he was selected to serve as the military governor to the Sea Islands of Georgia. Well, why is this important? Well, on January 12th of that year, a couple months earlier, General Sherman signed Sherman's Special Field Order Number 15. You probably know it as 40 acres and a mule. And what they did is they confiscated the land owned by slave owners and split it up into 40 acre plots and gave it to the formerly enslaved freedmen. They knew that Tunis had experience in dealing with ex enslaved people. So they put him in charge of this new program. He established schools. He taught farming and when the ex-slaves asked Tunis what they should do, you know, to raise some money and to build a better life, Tunis told them, hey, let me tell you what you need to do. You need to cut down all the trees. And it was like, what? It was like, nah, don't worry about that farming stuff. Cut down all the trees. I know white people, what you want to do is cut down all the trees. And they did it. And that's because Tunis knew they were going to give that land back to the white people eventually. He knew white people. But when they gave that land back to all of the former slave owners, the black ex-slaves had cut down trees, sold the timber. And because the white people didn't have anyone to till the land, the black people were able to buy that land with the money they had made selling timber from those ex-slave owners and have their own property. Tunis even took his own money and bought 1,250 acres in McIntosh County, Georgia, on one of those islands. And he established his own town. They had their own law enforcement agency. They had their own schools, courthouses, judges. And they also raised a 300 man militia that guarded them from this new violent terrorist group called the Ku Klux Klan. And so even though they burned one of his homes, the Klan was basically scared to go into McIntosh County, Georgia. Man, the Klan was so mad, they started killing all of the black people who were involved with voting in that part of Georgia, especially on the Sea Islands. They even poisoned one black registrar. So Tunis Campbell said, oh, yo, I'll do it. Like, they, they ain't going to bother me. Because everywhere Tunis went, he had armed guards from his militia. So, so they knew nobody wasn't going to bother Tunis. And in 1868, when the 14th Amendment was passed, Tunis and his son 
were both elected to the Georgia legislature. Tunis was a state senator. His son was a state representative. But during that time, Tunis helped write Georgia's new constitution. And the white people were so mad that they just started committing what they called back then outrages against black people, which made Georgia the first state to be kicked out of the union two times for being too racist. And they elected all of the black men who were elected alongside Tunis, all 33. They were known as the original 33, the first 33 members to serve black members to serve in the Georgia legislature. Now, the white legislators originally decided that even though, you know, because Tunis had helped write that new Georgia constitution that included the right to vote, the white legislators found a loophole and said, well, just because they have the right to vote, that don't mean they had the right to hold office and they expelled the original 33. But Tunis didn't take it laying down. He got all of those black legislators reinstated. Then Tunis went to Washington, right? And he talked to Senator Charles Sumner and told Charles Sumner, hey, the only way we're going to stop this is by changing the Constitution. And most historians believe that the exact wording of the 15th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which gave African-Americans the right to vote, were the words of Tunis Campbell. Now, of course, this made the white folks even matter, especially when he used that constitutional amendment and this other law that he pushed for called the Civil Rights Act of 1870 to charge former slave owners and Ku Klux Klan members with violating the constitutional rights of black people. So the white members of the Georgia legislature trumped up some charges on Tunis Campbell, saying that he was violating the constitutional rights of white people and ousted him from the Georgia legislature by what the Washington Post called a judicial lynching. Now, he wasn't just ousted from the Georgia legislature. He was sentenced to hard labor on a Georgia prison chain gang which was this new phenomenon that came after the Civil War to use free black labor. So essentially, this man who had never been a slave was enslaved. When he was released, he left the state of Georgia for good and died in 1891 at the age of 79 years old, which was really old compared to the life expectancy back then. But the thing about Tunis Campbell is that he never really died. Tunis Campbell is the reason why Belleville, Georgia and McIntosh County, Georgia were the centers of black political power in Georgia for years. And it's also why you have to listen to this podcast. You have to tell a friend about it. You got to download that Grio app and subscribe to this podcast on whatever platform you listen to it. And that's why we always leave you with the black saying and today's black saying is from, of course, Tunis Campbell. In 1832, he said, I vow to never leave this country until every slave is free on American soil. We'll see you next time on The Griot Daily. If you like what you heard, please give us a five-star review, download The Griot app, Subscribe to the show and share it with everyone you know. Please email all questions, suggestions, and compliments to podcast at thegrio.com. 